One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> the fact, I love love faxing out before a broadcast. Five, four, three, two, one. Stugatz is the same one, way every time. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. It's that or ESPN Radio is presented. Yeah. An old classic. <laughs> there is a lot to talk about locally, Stugatz. I don't know because Stugatz is blissfully oblivious on weekends, flying into Chicago to see his daughter play lacrosse, lacrosse for the number two ranked team in the country. Are you aware that we are sitting right now in the middle of a state of emergency? No. You don't know what happened right here this weekend, why there was a curfew last night on Miami Beach? You know nothing about where we're sitting right now. Been in Chicago, Dan, the Windy City. Uh, thank you, Stugatz. Yep. Well, this is uh, as dangerous. Voice hurts. As, uh, this is as dangerous as this area has ever felt. We have a block away from us, less than a block away from us this weekend. Somebody was killed, shot, murdered, uh, execution style. Didn't even seem to be a fight. And then the day before that, less than three blocks away, right here, right in front of us, it happened to somebody else. So you've got people being flippant about both the life of others and their own freedom because there's so much police presence here that the murderers were immediately arrested but again they weren't fights when you see the videos they look like execution style killings and miami beach has no way of knowing how to handle this stuff so what they do is just throw a curfew up what was supposed to be and this is just the beginning of spring break what was supposed to be a concert fun a lot of music a lot of free stuff around here over the weekend is now being clamped down on, and I'm sure because it's an embarrassment to public officials, it's going to get clamped down on even more in the coming weeks because it's hugely embarrassing for the city to not be able to have a spring break party without execution-style killings. And thanks to Billy Corbin, I got to see these videos, these horrific videos. I mean, I, I don't know how I feel about posting these videos. Like, I, <laughs> You're blaming Corbin, I'm though? I'm not blaming I mean, him. I'm just like, I didn't post it a lot of It's just places. one of those things where I just stumble across it. It's right. just all of a sudden I'm watching a video that I really don't have any. Like, I get it. I can see a headline, and I don't need to see the actual video. Stugatz says they're posted in a lot of places. None of them evidently places where Stugatz looks well, for video, Well, not in Chicago. Though. No, not in the Windy City. They were not posted they don't there. Have, they don't have yes. internet there. Well, they do. I just, I, I, I wasn't checking it. I probably should. Does the curfew ever help, though? Does it help? Like, Well, there were no killings at 3.30 a.m. last night after they put in a curfew of midnight. All it does is end the fight and end the fun of the tourism down here and makes it so that the police presence is so overwhelming that it's hard for anybody to get in and out, hard for anybody to live here, hard for anybody to have fun because of how dangerous it feels. Regardless, uh, we will try to do a normal sports day because there was plenty happening locally in sports. We will get to the University of Miami basketball team. We will have the FAU coach on. We've got two South Florida teams in the Sweet 16. <laughs> Stugatz, ACC, the ACC, Miami, is the only reason that the ACC didn't have a streak snap to 42 straight years getting to the Sweet 16 because Miami – is the last remaining ACC team, and for as bad as it looked in game one, yeah. and it looked terrible. My only analysis of Wong is that he could throw up a two for 12, and in that game... It's he, all you got, really, and, well, yes. And he, that's what he gave you against Drake. He gave you a one <laughs> for 10 against Drake, and there's an awful lot. So you got some of this basketball so bad. Michigan State advanced going two for 16 from three. Yeah. Over in the I saw it. I saw Survive in advance, Dano. <laughs> I mean... I saw in the overall going into Sunday, Jeff Goodman tweeted out that NCAA tournament teams were shooting 30.6% from three. Isn't it funny how to see, you see NBA basketball and how great it is, and then you yeah. see Ooh. college basketball and you're like, why are you taking that long range Ooh. contested two? Yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of 17 footers in yeah, college like, basketball. Hey, brick the front rim. You guys, you're like, ugh. You bite your tongue right now. For what? FAU doesn't do that. FAU? FAU is, have you seen a second of FAU this year? Uh, no. Yes, last night. Uh, well, last night I did. They're and the guy. You just said, they no, were no, no, three no, point shooters. The announcer said last night, this team doesn't take long twos. This what the, what team. makes FAU so good is they attack the rim or they shoot threes. That's it. My it's favorite like an NBA though, team. My favorite though is all of the analysts that have not been a part of what's happened in the yeah. NBA and all of the you know forty threes a game and all the shooting. And you hear the analysts is like, you can't settle for threes. You got to get to the rim. You got to get into your mid range game. You got to get. You got to feed the post. And it's like. They said that like, in the Canes like, game, and I was like, "What like, is happening?" I was like, right "Lads, now? like we haven't we haven't done this for like ten years in the NBA. What like 
stop encouraging 16 footers. They're terrible shots. It is a minor <laughs> league basketball that we dress up and enjoy. It's awesome. I don't care. That's, I mean, that's fine. You can enjoy people who can't shoot. And... Minor league implies they get paid any money mm-hmm. from their schools. They yeah. Get. Okay, but they do get paid some money from not their school. From sponsors. <laughs> Does anyone bounce goes. back from bad games, though, like Isaiah Wong? I mean, honestly. I you mean, sound like you have he has a enough, of, Listen, he has oh enough God. bad games. Dan, listen, I cheered my ass off. Big win, Northwestern over North Carolina. That puts us firmly at number two in the country, right behind Syracuse. We lost to them by a goal. But Wong has so many bad games that he leads the country in bounce back games. And he had another one yesterday. What a doozy. That's what I'm talking about when I say do it in March. You know who did it in March? Isaiah Wong. Well, he did it the last game you watched in March. Earlier in March, he went one for ten. Regardless, we'll get to Uh, that. That's what happens. Survive in advance, Dano. I mean, mean, but if if they had lost that first game against Drake with like eight as, minutes. As they should have. The only yes. reason they didn't lose is because it made <laughs> Larinaga decided very late, let's go full court pressure. And it made me wonder, why weren't you doing this all game? Drake <laughs> can't get the ball over half court against you. Just bank for incompetence. That's essentially the strategy for a lot of college basketball is assume the other team cannot get the ball up the floor <laughs> when pressurized. Uh, Stugatz, though, what I wanted to talk about, though, what that happened locally here before we get to Gasecki going to the Patriots, Berrios coming to the Dolphins, Laramie Tunsil without an agent doing a better job of negotiating than anyone in the NFL. He's going to have four three-year contracts that make him the highest paid tackle in the league before he's done because he goes on these short-term deals. Uh, Last night, the World Baseball Classic and Cuba came to Miami. And what I wanted to talk to you about, because there seems to be a real cultural disconnect here, Keith Oberman between tweets about Putin being a war criminal and Trump getting arrested is coming out against the WBC saying that some of these players and these teams are going to have to be insured and aren't going to be able to get insurance because Altuve is out for eight to 10 weeks getting injured in an exhibition. Edwin Diaz is out for the season getting injured. Yep. He was saying that these are just exhibitions, but there's a real cultural disconnect here because the players Six Dominican players were asked, what do you like better, World Baseball Classic? What's more important to you or the World Series? Five said the World Baseball Classic. These are major leaguers. Yep. And one said they're the same. Nobody said the World Series. Interesting. Randy Orozarena is playing for Mexico. He's not Mexican. He's Cuban. He said his catch in the Mexico game against Puerto Rico felt better and was bigger than the home runs he hit in the World Series. So there's a clear cultural disconnect between how some people care about this and how the Latin players playing for their country and patriotism feel about it. But yesterday, the Cuban team comes to Miami. And speaking of this cultural disconnect, Major League Baseball seems to be surprised and angry about something that I simply don't understand how you can be surprised about unless you're totally culturally disconnected. They were surprised by the amount of protesting last night that the Cuban baseball team was playing. And in Miami, any time a Cuban artist of any kind, a singer, a theater person performs, there are 200 protesters remembering a never forget time for our old people in our life who suffered the effects of communism more than us, more than most of Miami does now. You got a dying breed of Cuban who fights communism and knows that that baseball team is a political propaganda tool for the government. And so when it plays in Miami, and it'll never play in Miami again because of what happened last night, because there were people running on the field, there were protests outside the field. LeVon Hernandez refused while throwing out the first pitch to shake the hand of the Cuban manager. A Cuban reliever in the bullpen is getting pelted with whatever it is that he was getting pelted with verbally, and he decided to throw a baseball. Did you see the video to this, Chris Cody? Where was the video of this? Like, how hard did he throw a baseball at a heckler? It seemed like full force. It was like a definitely a, a video from a phone. It wasn't on the broadcast, but it was just... I didn't see the sound, but it was just somebody yelling and pointing down at the pitcher, and he just looked like he got fed up with it and just chucked the ball hard at him, like like a like a crow hop, like full force. I didn't. It, I don't think he hit him, 
but it's just I, I I I'm confused. I mean, I'm definitely a little ignorant with this stuff. Like why like why are we taking this out on the players? I mean, this is such a difficult spot for them to be in. This is something that's always at the core of this because you don't want to be mad at the players. They're representing uh, baseball, their government. They're representing their own form of patriotism and can't speak freely about it for fear of risk of their families being punished when the baseball player has a better life than most in Cuba. And it still isn't such a great life, but they come in here and they get totally beat up. I'm more interested in the fact that Major League Baseball is angry about what happened yesterday as if they haven't had a baseball team in this town forever. Like, it's like they don't, they do not understand what is happening in this market in any way whatsoever. And it's it's a strange disconnect that they would be surprised in any way. Like, you, you have to be paying no attention and have you have your hand on the pulse of nothing going on here if you're surprised that a few hundred people would protest this. Especially when Rob Manfred told us he has a house in Palm Beach. That's about as close to Palm this Beach. as it gets. Yes, that's about as close <laughs> as it gets to this. I think, I think they were somewhat aware of the possibility of this because they started Cuba, not in the United States. There were three regions that they started this tournament in. And they had him in Japan, as geographically far away from here as possible. And I imagine they were just sort of hoping, well, let's hope that Cuba doesn't advance. Because then we know that they're heading to Miami. And I, I don't know how much they want to disconnect from Miami, because Miami has turned this thing into one of the most fun events to watch. And like maybe there's a chance that it would be like this in other cities. But if you're hearing a bunch of people going, oh, the WBC, what does it even mean? If you played it in other baseball cities, they may they might not be as into it. But... When you're creating an international competition that taps into patriotism, that's never going to be a purely clean experience. You oh, but it's you can have it be rabid without being this political. It wasn't this political anywhere else. It's this team in this market. Cuba playing anywhere else in the United States doesn't cause this because this is the only market where you will find this kind of indignance sort of fighting for the beliefs of our grandparents. There's kind of ignorance, too, when it comes to the fact of like Cuba playing in other places. It's like, oh, we don't really know anything about Cuba. It's just kind of far over there and like people over there deal with it. And like, I don't really know anything. I know some stuff that happened in the 60s, but that doesn't mean anything to me today. Like... This here is a powder keg. There's people that have come from Cuba generationally from my grandparents to my parents to people that are still coming over now. And it's like people have different connection points with Cuba. Stugatz, when baseball comes to town and gets with its passion a rabid patriotism, but also politics, do you realize how uncomfortable that makes anybody in management, <laughs> anybody in charge to have, uh, they just, they want the commerce of the rabid enthusiasm without the reminders, oh, hey, that's an awful communist regime that oppresses and hurt and caused great pain to our grandparents and parents. And they can't get one without the other, it seems not, like. Not with Cuba, right. you can't. Not but, Cuba and Miami. But their idea is to turn this into the Baseball World Cup. And it's working because, as you said, there are players in the Dominican team that feel as if this is a really important competition. So they want this to be the Baseball World Cup. As you start expanding, you're only increasing the likelihood that countries with political problems show up at your door. As a matter of fact, Venezuela was in this tournament, and they were playing games in Miami, and there's some issues. There. There's a huge Venezuelan community here. They have huge political problems in that country, but it didn't quite boil over because there isn't the same fervor. There isn't, I guess, the same kind of infrastructure that there is for Cuban politics in Miami, but it is inevitable. I mean, we saw it with the most recent World Cup. Qatar was hosting the thing, and then they played in it. That was a huge political issue. Saudi Arabia was in that tournament. That was a political issue. Russia was thrown out of the tournament in the qualifying stage. That was a huge issue. And FIFA has kind of proven incompetent at being able to handle those things over and over and over again. So if you're tapping into international stuff, you don't just get the, we're going to sell a bunch of Dominican Republic hats and people are going to be wearing them around Miami all the time. You also have to take this other stuff too. And it's complex and it's hard. And like you said, it's kind of impossible to believe that they couldn't have seen some of this coming with fielding a Cuban team in this tournament. 
Stugatz, I want to make fun of Keith Overman for screaming at clouds because I really don't want with my sports conversation. How are these major league teams going to ensure this in the future? <laughs> like, it's not why I want to watch sports, but well, I do. Somebody think of the insurers. <laughs> that wasn't even his worst tweet. The, the worst tweet was the one that said, first Freddie Freeman, now Edwin Diaz. The World Baseball Classic is a meaningless exhibition series designed to get you to buy another uniform to hell with the real season and split up teammates based on where their grandmothers got laid. Can Ooh, we just terrible. ignore Oberman on this? This is so yes. off. Yes. I yes. have right. I have not seen this much like from my baseball friends out there. They're talking about this way more than any World Series in re like people baseball fans American and non-American love this thing. But are Everybody's we, are into we being this. myopic based on where we are? We're in Miami. No, I, no? I, I, no. This, my conversations about this are are outside of Miami. Okay, like, right. A lot of sports fans that I talk to on a daily basis are watching it, or at least interested in what's going on. It is interesting where you're having players say, "I'd rather win this than win a World Series." Like there is a conundrum here where Major League Baseball. First off, the timing of it is ridiculous to do it right before the season starts because. You've had three major injuries that are going to impact three teams that are contending. That's a fine. That's yours. Uh, that's not no, mine. That was, that was me. That was me. Oh, I, I, had, okay. I, had the, I had the board up, and I'm trying wow. to find ratings for the World Baseball Classic for you guys. Yeah. Stugatz, yeah. Paul George. It's $10, Paul, Paul, by the way. Paul George had a catastrophic injury playing for U.S. basketball. For no, no, no. I, and Mark Cuban has railed against it for years about his players playing in the Olympics. Does not want it? And so, But you have this thing. That's immensely popular, that the fans seem to love, that the players seem to love, yet their paychecks are coming from playing in the major leagues, and now you have three teams who have been severely impacted by major injuries to key players playing in what is an exhibition. Well, I mean, they're Ed, not getting paid for it. Edwin Diaz wasn't playing. He was celebrating. He was celebrating. celebrating That's a funny thing. I know. Celebrating winning on the mound. But he'll never – like, he wouldn't celebrate winning a regular season game like that. If they clinch the playoffs – Have you it, seen his entrance? But, yeah, but it's it's a slow trot. <laughs> I know. It's a slow trot. On the, there's no risk in the entrance. Let's talk for a second, though, because we mentioned the Dominican team was eliminated early. These are all uh, the all-star teams for countries except for Cuba, which has to play its minor leaguers because the defectors are over in the major <laughs> leagues. Their best players, like Randy Rosarena, is out there playing for Mexico, which, Stugatz, I want you to think about what I'm about to say for a second. Randy Rosarena, who I believe every time he bats, he's going to get a hit. He's going to hit the ball hard somewhere every time I see him bat. He's a great Cuban baseball player. He has dominated a World Series. He made a catch for Mexico and said it was bigger. A catch than a World <laughs> Series home run. Again, he's not Mexican. He just he, he asked the president of Mexico for citizenship for a day because Mexico was part of his story when he defected, getting from Cuba. He played for Mexican teams very cheap to get to the major leagues. But Trey Turner is saying, Stugatz, the United States team, this isn't about even Latin stuff. He's saying he's never heard a sound in his life like the sound he heard when he hit a grand slam, and that it's the best moment of his baseball life. But Oberman's not wrong that these teams cannot be happy that they are paying these <laughs> players millions of dollars. And if you amp up the emotions, I don't know about you guys, but I think it's more likely that someone gets hurt if we're playing at the height of emotion than if we're just playing spring training baseball and we're not that interested in winning the game. We're just trying to do sort of a warm-up. No one's really trying. A, a warm-up to the season. I mean, people are trying. People are trying to win jobs, and you're playing against guys who are trying to, right. to win a livelihood. But, but this feels like game Game seven World Series like every single night. It's, I understand your it's, point. Yeah. It's ridiculous to watch this well, bigger. thing grow emotionally <laughs> with the players. And I can't believe how many of them are saying that the World Series pales compared to what amounts to a baseball Hall of Fame game, what amounts to an exhibition. Brandon Nimmo of the, of the Mets didn't play in the World Baseball Classic because he was like, hey, I got to focus. I don't want to get injured. And then he got injured in spring training. Like, what are we doing here? Like, if they're just playing, they're getting their work in. There's pitch limits on these. The MLB kind of oversees this tournament. Like, this, it, this is... 
this is far different than even the World yeah. Cup. There's more risk, I feel but like. But at least he got injured doing something for the team that is paying his paycheck. That's I mean, the problem. These teams just have to deal with this. There are competitions outside Chris, of your league. Like this, I, I'm I not get arguing. It. I, I get know. It. It's, it's a not... conundrum. Like I, I'm not arguing. Right. It's popular. The players love it. The fans love it. Not arguing. But if you were an owner, if you right. own the Mets or the Braves or one Thanks of these teams, you would be upset. The you other thing, be. too, is injuries are random, right? Anything could happen at any time. The 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 Edwin Diaz thing jumping on the mound, tearing his patellar tendon, like that could have happened at any point. He could well, have been getting it, out of bed and it done would, it. It would not have happened during the celebration of a spring training victory. He like, wouldn't have been celebrating that on a regular it season game until at least September. <laughs> but but to like Major League Baseball is overseeing this competition. Theoretically, the revenue generated from this competition goes into a pot that ultimately goes and gets distributed to players. So in some ways, this competition is paying for part of salaries, but I, as much as there are people that are saying, oh, well, somebody think of the baseball teams. I don't care. Yeah. I, I don't care about the outcome of the Met season. I'm not going to watch most regular season baseball games. As a fan, I'm consuming this way more. I care about this way more. And yeah, if there's some collateral damage to the baseball season, I, I don't care. So, like, if, if, as far as I'm concerned, will somebody think of the baseball teams is not a concern for me. And that's exactly the point, right? Major League Baseball oversees this event. This is just increasing the popularity of baseball. More people are watching this sport than any time I can remember in recent memory. This is the most popular baseball has been, and it's in large part because you're seeing the personalities of these players. You're seeing guys who care in March in a time where, look, the NBA and the NFL doesn't really exist. The NBA is not at the playoffs yet. This is the perfect time for baseball to capitalize. The NFL doesn't exist. What is he talking about? Sorry, bring Mar- science. Take it Mr. back. Bear. Who said that? Take it I back apologize. Right I'll, I'll walk Good. back into the shadows. What are Excellent. you talking about? Yeah. Go sit Adam, in the penalty box. It's, 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 it's a dead time of year. Miles so Sanders the guy to the Panthers. What are they doing over there? Talking about a tournament during March Madness. <laughs> Brandon Cooks was traded. What are you talking about? Oh, a piece. It is interesting, and I think I can say this because... Because <laughs> it's a weird thing to say. I feel like the increase of attention on the World Baseball Classic is solely because there's a commotion in the stands. There are a bunch of people banging on frying pans and a whole bunch of people are saying, wait a minute. This isn't what baseball is to me. Why is that reliever tearing off his jersey like a wrestler because he's excited? Baseball, the World Baseball Classic is basically just baseball without all of the repressions, like yes. all of the emotional repressions. And people are like, what is this fun thing, noisy thing over here? Wait, baseball? Baseball can be fun? Holy shit! That baseball can be fun. They're not gonna play 162 games. Oh, I can I can pay attention for a couple weeks. That's part that of it That honestly too. is part of it. Yes. It's like, wait a minute, this is all gonna be done in a couple weeks. I'm yeah. in it. There's yeah. seven games. I'm in. Sprints. Yeah. It's minimal investment. I, I'm down for that. It's, a, it's over on Tuesday. I will snort some exhibition baseball with Vuvuzelas. Okay, fine, no problem. I saw some guy on TikTok that basically went through. If you go to any country or any region in the world, baseball's fun. In Korea, baseball's <laughs> fun. In Japan, baseball is fun. In Mexico, baseball is, is fun. In the Caribbean, baseball is fun. The World Baseball Classic is fun. The only place where baseball is not fun is Major League Baseball. We're trying to speed it up because it's so boring. Right. <laughs> Let's get it over with. <laughs> well, so, and our, our solution to the lack of fun is to, like, Put an organist in the middle of Make it. Make less of it and, and right now. Everybody clap your hands. And da na 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 like that that's our that's our that's major league baseball's answer to the world baseball. I mean, I want everybody clap your hand. But they, do they even do that at baseball games? I think that might be too exciting for baseball. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> too much culture. I was watching the FAU FDU game. On Sunday night, hoot, hoot. and Game. FDU had a player, and they kept going to him on the, showing him on the bench, and he was like, you know, you know how they, this happens every year during March Madness. There's bench players that uh, do like a little dance, guy. or they do like something funny, and the camera will cut back to them. And I was thinking, Chris Cody would be so <laughs> good at that. Oh, man. I was just picturing him sitting there the whole time. Like Chris would be absolutely that, crushing this. That's a the, bench dancer. That's the yes. ultimate. That's yes. the ultimate compliment. But like, only for <laughs> only for like you know one of the like low seated teams. Like right. only know, for like a Fairleigh Dickinson yeah. or an FAU. Sure, of course. I could be the energy guy in Kentucky. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I but no, you're the guy for like St. Peter's who we see. 
for so five he's minutes. Breakout star. So he's the breakout, the breakout star, star of the first round. And we round. think about him probably five years later, and we're like, oh yeah, remember that guy? That's I'm a walk on, right? Yeah, I'm a walk on. Yeah, sure. you could be a walk on. I, I saw a, a scroll last night. It was F uh, Fairly Dickinson's run comes to an end. They won a game. I saw that. Like, I saw that. Really. They won a big Cody. game. We're trying to turn that into something. I saw the exact they same thing. They won two games. They won the play-in game. The play-in. Ah, and then, right. I saw the exact same really thing, and I was game. like. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's can not you, a game. Can you call it a run if you make it to the round of two and That's, second round of you the ha- lose? You have to get to the Sweet 16 for it to be a run. Can we put that on yes. the Can we at least agree on that? Yes. Agree. Juju, put it on the poll, please. Is winning two games in the tournament a run? Can you call They won a game. That is misleading. It's one and a half games. Let's call it that. Two games. I'm with you. Princeton is making a run it's right now. It's reaching the yes. round of 32 a For, run in the NCAA tournament. It's happened tournament. two times no. in the history of the tournament. That, you guys, that's not a run, though. Guys, hold on. That's a big upset. Hold on. It's not a big upset. It's the biggest upset I've ever seen. This is empirically one of the worst teams to ever make the tournament. Fairly Dickinson, my father's alma mater. Is, really? That's correct. Yes, my father got an engineering what? degree from Fairleigh oh. Dickinson. Really? Right. Can we right. call Poppy to congratulate love? him? He is. Wow. He's, he's not capitalized. He's we should capitalize. Huh? We, have, we wow. have two days to capitalize. We, we, there is nothing. It surprises you that our show is disorganized. How is I mean, he not posting a gloating Instagram story from the Levitard wait, show? But account? but but before you get him some gear, before you guys dismiss this, okay? Their net rating. When you look at Pomeroy and Sagarin, and it's all two ninety nines and Ken three, Palm. They're, they're in the three hundreds on everything. They're in like this is one of the worst teams to ever make the tournament, and no doubt the worst team in this tournament. And they knocked off a one seed. Also, they kept throwing around that they're the shortest team in the tournament. Yeah. Purdue was the tallest team, and I'm like, yeah, that'll happen when you have a seven four guy. <laughs> you, that guy's <laughs> huge. Excuse Excuse that a little Thank bit. you, Tony, for that analysis. That guy's huge. <laughs> I was Excellent watching. I was like, analysis. damn. Yes, he's Where'd sick. that guy come from? <laughs> He was actually on who that is. <laughs> Thank you, Tony, for the excellent analysis. Of seven four. The seven four guy is huge. Sometimes that's good analysis, though. I mean, you walk into the Heat locker room sometimes. You see Shaquille O'Neal, and you go, that "Guy's mad." I get it. So I get a it big now. Guy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, this is, I've told you guys before that somehow this is the comment that people always make. Still, Shaq is on 50. When they walk away from Shaq, it's like, he's big. And it's like, isn't that the only thing you knew about him before you met him? But it's still <laughs> shocking when you walk up to him yeah. and you're staring is, at his belly right. button. It's shacking. It is shocking. And it is shacking. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Cody would be an excellent... Really? Oh. That's the kind of energy he would give here. you from the, from the fairly Dickinson bench while waving a towel. You got to do this thing. You got to do this yeah. thing with the arms out. Hold everyone back. Oh, yeah. Hold yep. everyone back. Yep. I was classic. that guy, like, in high school baseball, if I wasn't yeah. playing in a game or, like, in between innings, I'm the first guy out of the dugout. High fives oh, for everybody. Yeah. Oh, High fives oh, for everybody. Yeah. Hey, let's all, let's get it up this inning. Everybody outside the dugout, let's go. A little team huddle before the inning. Up against the fence. Is this correct, what I am about to say? Because I shouldn't have been shocked by this, maybe, but I was shocked by it. After two days of the tournament, two days of the tournament, of the 20 million brackets at ESPN, there were zero perfect ones, and I think it was because of Fairleigh Dickinson. Like there were well, other and Princeton. There, yeah. well, there yes. were other upsets, but that that one, like that Miami, one, Miami, what an upset! Makes it so that uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, that is the easiest twelve five yeah. of all time. Drake absolutely winning that game, and then Miami goes on like a twelve point run with yeah. two minutes left and wins. Yeah, Ridiculous. Miami was the weakest five seed, and when you're looking at the tournament, you're going, all right, well, there's always going to be two 12s that win, so you can just pencil in Drake. I only picked Miami because it was like, it ended up being like the upset pick of the first round was taking Miami. Miami bombed Indiana yesterday, and it, it did make me wonder, Stugatz, because the way that team plays, they play fast, they score a lot, they steal, they're not very big, but they, they, they play aggressive defense to see in the last couple of minutes of the game against Drake, where Drake couldn't get the ball over half court without turning it over, it made me wonder why were they not being that aggressive earlier? When, mm-hmm. I, you can't, you can't do Nolan Richardson's, you know, uh, whatever it was, forty minutes, 40 of, hell. minutes of hell. Uh, you can't, what a team. you can't mm-hmm. do that, but you can full court press more than they did throughout that game because that game was dreadful. I thought the season was going to end on such a whimper for Miami because of how they played all but the last two minutes of that game. And having seen that game, I'm still surprised Miami won that game. They were down (laughs) nine with like six minutes left and deserved to be. Every Hurricane fan that watched that game 
looked at the scoreboard with a minute to go and go, how the hell did that happen? They gave up. So the, the biggest knock against Miami all year, if you look at the, the Kempom numbers, was I think they were ranked 134th in defense in the country. They were a bad defense all season. They just overcame it with having really good offensive players. But they gave up a point in the final five minutes of the game. Like you said, with the full court press, they gave up a point in the final five minutes of the game. That entire time you're going, Omir looks like a shell of himself, even though he had a double-double. He doesn't look like his normal self. And then Isaiah Wong drops a turd in that first round game where if we're doing a show, there should have been a turd on the court, right? It was, okay. it, it was, it was horrendous from him. And, and like, by the way, the first 10 minutes of the Indiana game, he was also bad. Turned it around, have a really good, as a really good game. And now you feel good about Isaiah Wong, but that game was so bad. So you have your two, two of your four star players giving you nothing and you still end up surviving. That was a classic survive in advance game. And every single person yep. in, my, in my friend group group chat, survive in advance. There's nothing better than sending that in all caps. SNA. SNA. There's uh, nothing, the best. There's nothing, nothing better. Nothing survive better. in advance is what March is all about, Dan. How can you say yeah. that? There's yeah. nothing better. It's great. It's an underrated feeling. I don't I don't have I don't have tournament experience. I'm not like a I'm not like a Kansas fan where I've been doing this my entire life. Kansas a, sucks. Get out of here. Kansas wow. always loses at the inopportune and time. They're in my bracket. They won, won the, the national, national championship, championship a year ago. But I agree <laughs> with you. Matter. But I agree with you. Tony, I agree I with you. Always it's, choke. A, it's a bad time for that take. I, I let the first one go. Go sit in the penalty box. <laughs> the I first let, one being what? Oh, that, 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 that Eddie is big. Oh, dude, he's huge. Yeah. Is he not? Seven four. Go sit in the penalty box. Last year. Wait, but, but, but he's right. But I do he agree with him. I you you cut him right. this yeah. time last year and yeah. gotten away with it. You yeah. can't do it right now. Uh, what do you say? You're not used to it. But Jim Laranega, he's yeah. done the impossible. Like I know. Listen, the Canes were good a long time ago with Leonard Hamilton. It was never this good, never this consistent. Right where they are now. Back-to-back Sweet 16s. I think they've made four since he's become the head coach of the University of Miami. I'm not certain Jim Laranega doesn't deserve a statue. I'm serious. Wow. Because he has done wow, the impossible. I like no it, one cares about college hoops down here. And yet this guy has figured out a way to give the fan, the, the small amount of fans down here, something to cheer for every single year. They are four games away from winning a national championship. They could just as easily win the national championship as any of the remaining teams. But more importantly, they're consistently here. Yeah, like and Mike here. fired him last year. Second weekend of the tournament. Jessica, you made Four a, times you, you now. made a correctly skeptical face. Can you repeat that? They have just as good of odds of winning the national championship as any. It's of the a other wide teams. open field. Yeah, but like, I, I mean, feel did like you watch the first weekend? Sports book. They have different odds. They are different. They do. Yeah, but I don't pay attention also, to the Houston sports books. Houston looks really yes, good. They were the really only team that I watched this weekend, and I was like, oh shit, okay, they're actually. They didn't look good in game one, just like Miami didn't, but they looked good in game two. But I think Stugatz is wrong in every way. When you don't says, think he deserves a statue? Uh, put it on the poll, please, Juju at Levitard Show. Does Jim Laranega deserve a statue? The reason I oh. say you're wrong in every way is because you say they have as good a chance as anybody, and for all of the odds everywhere, I'm guessing they're favored <laughs> by nobody and have some of the worst odds to win the championship. Uh, it feels wide open, Dan. Anyone team, can win it. The only team with worst odds is Princeton. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, same odds, Dano. They have, the, they have the same odds as FAU. <laughs> They have the same FAU amount of games have the left. Exact same odds. <laughs> I get what he was doing. They I'm going to have the same, have the same feeling left. if Houston wins or if UM wins. It's not going to surprise me. I'm not going to be 50-50. shocked. It would surprise everybody no if that way. happened. No way. This each team game. went to the Elite Eight last year, and they have Wong. Stu got to, I mean, each game's 50-50, right? There can only be two winners. Exactly right. All right uh, we have been given a lot of money by DraftKings to understand how some of this stuff works. I believe if you look this up right now, Whittingham, you will find <laughs> that Purdue Whose odds are better at winning the championship uh, than Miami, of them. even though I mean, they've been eliminated from the tournament? I'd also like to point out Houston also was in the Elite, elite Eight last year oh, no. and in the Final Four the year before. Uh, That's going to at least be a fun game with a lot of athleticism on the court because while I can't name many of the Houston players, I did see that second game, Jessica, and, and they looked extremely competent. They looked less good than that in the first one that they played. Very fast and competent is how I would describe them as well. Yes. (laughs) My analysis. Seven-point underdogs. it's it's uh, It's not what I saw from college basketball this weekend wasn't fast and competent all over the place. Houston stood out 
in that regard, and they've been that all season. Plus seven, though. I'll jump on that. What do you think? Yeah. I'm doggy. Yeah. Huh? Let's do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wide open. <laughs> Plus 255 on the money line? What are you thinking? The the cackling in the other Don't get room crazy. when those odds came up that uh, that refuted everything that Stugat said. I knew they had me, Dan. Except the Larinaga statue. 